Some GI conditions respond to diet changes. They go away, but to do so requires following rules, which is hard. But following these rules is meant to make following the diet easy. Hi, I'm Mark Cooper, board certified gastroenterologist. Elimination diets are so difficult because the foods you plan to remove from your diet are in fact present much more widely than you'd at first imagine. Let's say you've been asked to remove dairy from your diet and you think, so I want, let's put some soy milk on my cereal. Until you realize that's been banned too. That's all right, almond milk is delicious. Nuts, can't have those either. So you go and you find some obscure lotus flower milk and you're pouring it on your cereal and you realize it's been brand. In your elimination diet, you got two goals. You wanna find the foods that don't work with your gut health and reconcile with those that do. It's about breaking up to make up. And the first two rules you're gonna follow with your healthcare team, be that your GI doctor, dietitian. First, meet with them and get specific about what you're gonna eliminate from your diet. If you're talking about eliminating dairy, does that just mean milk? Or does it mean cheese and yogurt too? Does it just mean cow dairy? Or do the goats need to go too? Second rule is you gotta be thinking about whether you need any kind of testing. Dairy testing is really inaccurate, so it's often not very helpful. If you're eliminating wheat, when we're talking about celiac, that's actually an IgG test, and so an IgE test that's available in some home kits really probably often doesn't matter. We go into more detail about that in a separate video. The next two rules are all about you. Rule number three, you got a clean house. I want you to dig into your cupboard, find every label and read it, all the way to the last ingredient. You've got to know that wheat is often in soy sauce and soy is in many canned soups. Find where those triggers are in your cupboard, put them all in a box and just throw that out of the balcony. <laughs> Told you it's gonna be a breakup. Rule four, it's about four weeks. You gotta pick a date and be ready for four weeks of abstinence. No cheating, no makeup eating. You're gonna need to be ready to keep that entirely out of your diet because the same superpowers that make your immune system a friendly guard dog that'll attack a virus that you met five years ago, it's the same thing that if you eat a food trigger again, those IgG reactions are gonna flare up and ruin the whole thing. So this has gotta be a clean break. Rule five, it's time to revisit with your healthcare team. If you're feeling much better, your GI doctor may want to repeat an endoscopy to see if you've had healing of your GI tract. If you're not feeling better, you may want to explore other conditions that may be contributing to your symptoms. Very often though, there's going to be triggers that you've missed and your healthcare team may help you identify those. Rule six, make a plan to reintroduce food. If you have a single food elimination diet like gluten for celiac disease, then your relationship with gluten is over. But if you had a multi-food elimination, such as for latex food allergy or eosinophilic esophagitis, then make a plan with your doctor to reintroduce one food group. Your GI doctor may recommend that you perform an endoscopy before starting to reintroduce food so that we have a new baseline to ensure that you've had healing of your GI tract. You and your doctor will work together to pick one food to reintroduce. This food group might be the one most important to your diet, or it might be the one least likely to cause recurrence of your condition. Get on the same page and have a plan for what you're going to reintroduce. Rule seven, it's time to reintroduce food. So go to the grocery store and get your favorite foods from that food group and eat them with reckless abandon. Keep a careful diary of your symptoms over the next two weeks to consider whether you're actually having any recurrence. And then return to your doctor to make a plan for the next step of reintroduction. As you're thinking about your symptom diary, don't just pay attention to gas or bloating that you think of as your GI symptoms. Also be aware of any difficulty breathing. When you eliminate a food from your diet, you may have uncovered an IgE mediated allergy and those are the types of reactions that can cause airway conditions and at the worst anaphylaxis. So if you had eliminated nuts as part of an eosinophilic esophagitis elimination diet then you may as you reintroduce nuts find that you actually now have an IgE mediated reaction and so I want you to pay careful attention to whether you have any sort of airway symptoms and from there it's rinse and repeat. I told you this is going to be about breaking up to make up and hopefully by the end of your food elimination diet you found the foods that are your actual triggers. You've also been able to reconcile with some foods and be assured that those aren't actually causing your problems. And some of those substitutes that you made through the elimination, maybe you've discovered some new food romances. These seven steps are meant to make this process easy and clear. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you have, please subscribe to the channel to continue to find information about your gut health. Thank you and be safe.